Peggy Dunham has a 12-year-old daughter in middle school and alongside many others from the Groton community. She remembers the varsity football bullying incident like it was yesterday. Okay, it's the football team. Is it anybody else? Because they're the only the ones that got caught. So you just got to wonder, okay, is it going on in other areas of the school? It was a tough situation. A student reported this to me and I knew the seriousness was extreme. We've spent the better part of four months addressing it. In the weeks immediately following the hazing incident last September, the district brought in speakers to address the school board and student athletes. But this is the very first program aimed specifically at parents since the hazing incident canceled a football game. Somebody who has a friend in elementary school can totally change when they hit middle school and all of a sudden they're your enemy. So you kind of, they need, the kids need to, to be reminded of these tools to help deal with these social situations. Roughly two dozen parents listened to the state police, BOCES, and the Advocacy Center. They highlighted how to recognize actions of a bully before a situation becomes out of hand, such as always wanting to be in control, and also hammered home the importance of being an active bystander. One of the concerns we had actually was that students were um, not being active bystanders standards. When they knew something was wrong and they should have spoken up, they didn't really take the time to speak up. The district hopes it will be able to provide at least some nugget or morsel of information, sparking a conversation between the parents inside and their children at home, all in the name of hopefully avoiding another bullying incident in the future. You know, we'll plant the seed and hope that the seed, you know, grows a little bit. Helping to educate while hoping to make a difference. Reporting from Groton, I'm Alex Rosilla.